And joining me for a chat to talk about that England game, of course, and other stories, it's Businesswoman of the Year and Deputy Lieutenant, or is it Lieutenant? It's Lieutenant of the West Midlands. It's the wonderful Fleur Sexton. <laughs> I'm not used to lager and my beer that all mixed in <laughs> in, in, in one big jug. So I'm feeling, a little, I'm feeling a little bit, you know, that middle age thing where you used to be able to drink pints of this when you were a student, and now I'm middle aged. It's like, oh, oh dear, <laughs> where's, the co- where's the coffee? Anyway, good to speak to you. Now, is it a deputy lieutenant or def- deputy lieutenant? It's pronounced lieutenant in, uh, in the UK. Yeah. And uh, I think Lieutenant is all an American pronunciation. Oh, okay, you can take both then, dear. All we know is that you're, connect- <laughs> you're connected to the Queen of the Royal Family. We love it. Uh, right, well, it was a quiet Wednesday night then, wasn't it? Down he goes. It's a penalty to England. Oh, Schmeichel saved it, but Kane is there on the rebound. And Kane buries it into the back of the net. England are up and into the final. They've beaten Denmark after extra time by two goals to one. Wasn't it amazing, Fleur? And what a great it was mood. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Where did you watch the match? At home. And I, yeah, I mean, I thought the same. It was just like, it was just so uplifting, wasn't it? And I think the, the thing that I really loved was the fact that they seemed so respectful and they seemed so. They, they, it matters, doesn't it? And it, somebody yeah. said about being part of something bigger, and I think that's really, really important. I mean, it's like what you're seeing in Coventry at the minute. Mm-hmm. Everybody's part of this bigger thing that we're all working through, and it's just an amazing experience to to have something like that, isn't it? It is. And, you know, honestly, I don't know about you, but I just think... All of us have been through so much. I know there'll be people listening who hate football, who don't see the significance, who actually have got a lot more, you know, quite arguably things to worry about than, you know, Gareth Southgate taking the team to the final. But just to have something to smile about, for me, is just oh, well, yeah. this the tonic we need. I mean, you know, be it good or bad, does the mood of the nation or, or the mood of anything affect you or impact you? Me personally, absolutely. I mean, I think it's so important. Like, yes, definitely. Like Coventry at the minute, you can't walk through Coventry without feeling happy. It's just not possible because everybody is doing something or building something or going somewhere. You know, there's this real feeling that you're part of something. And I think it's really important that, like, you know, at Pet Excite, it's all about the smiles and trying to keep everybody happy and, mm. and to get people seeing the positives when things are going wrong. I think we can do so much to uplift each other. You know, there's so many days that, yes, you could go around looking a bit miserable or you, you have had a bad day, but there's no point making everybody else feel miserable as well. That's and then it. apparently there's this thing, if you smile, you, you trick your brain into thinking you're happy. So it's actually self-fulfilling. Oh, see, so, that's good. And if people think... You, that, it's true. It's true. Yeah. If people think, you know, PetXI is the training company that you've run for over 20 years, helping a lot of young people across the Midlands and in Coventry... Uh, to do training, employment, uh, offering opportunities. You've got a fan here in Michael, he's text, Fleur is a legend, give her my half. Oh, thank you. It's like your cousin, isn't it? It's your cousin, is it? We're a relatable family. Uh, Well, we'll talk Mm. more uh, because travel has changed, Fleur. I will also talk about this new venture that you're doing as well. I know you're into going to food, aren't you? Oh, right, I know. You're becoming a food. Yes. Well, it's called Metropolis. The old Drapers building uh, opposite the Festival Hub for 2021, and um, we're opening it as a restaurant on Saturday. So we've got all local artists have got all their artwork on the walls. We've got um, a fantastic menu that is equal options for um, meat eaters, vegetarians, and vegans. So whatever you choose on the menu is available in all three options, which is fantastic. And we are training up a hundred young uh, people during the first year. So it's, it's going to be um, a training restaurant, a little bit like the Jamie 15. You know, oh, we're training yeah. up young people on site with, with a really established, experienced team. 
Uh, and it's just amazing. I'm there now. It's amazing. You know, we've got so many young people. They're starting traineeships. They're going to be doing apprenticeships. And they're doing it through the restaurant. And it's lovely. It's fun. It's lovely. Oh, and it's... But- yeah, that's lovely. Best of luck with that. We all love foodie establishments. I know, you know, we're all sort of coming out of this lockdown, so just to be able to sit somewhere and just eat oh, and yeah. talk or whatever is, yeah. is great. <laughs> and great to get young people trained. So uh, we are talking about all sorts of things coming up. Uh, why doesn't anyone talk about men looking good for their age? Apparently, we just look at women. But let's talk about travel, because I know you love travelling, Fleur. And the story of travel this summer has changed once again. Uh, the UK yeah. government says double jabbed people won't have to self-isolate when returning from amber countries from the 19th of July. Children under the age of 18 will also uh, no, not need to uh, quarantine, but the Transport Secretary Grant Shapps says these travellers will still need to take COVID tests. So, Fleur, will this change your rules change your summer plans? Well, I have no summer plans because I'm basically just in Coventry, enjoying Coventry and just seeing what happens. So I think that's the best way to have this summer. I'm certainly not going to be planning to go abroad, then it changes and then it changes. But I just don't, it's not my thing. I think there's so much going on in the, in the city. I'm perfectly happy to be here all summer. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, my must, plan. Yeah, I must admit, <laughs> I agree with you. But I suppose, you know, people say, some people listen, they just need to get away. They need the change environment. I know Michelle is yeah. listening. And Michelle's listening in Northern Ireland. And she flew there yesterday, desperate to get out. I mean, do you find the travel rules easy to follow? Oh, it's incredibly difficult to follow. And I think that that's the problem at the minute. I think people need to know, people need consistent rules. So people need to know this is what's happening and and it needs to not really change. So I think obviously the government is are working with a very changeable situation. But I think when you're a leader, you need to take a line and then stick with it. So personally, I think it would be better having it a bit less options for people to travel but they knew what the deal was i think Mm. it's a constant change which is very unsettling that's it and to be honest i'm a a presenter i've got if you told me to name seven countries on the amber list i just i just don't know people keep changing it's all in and out Uh, you're right it's incredibly difficult we're city of culture this year so come on if we can't stay in coventry this year when can we stay in Coventry. Absolutely. Um, and there's so much going on. So, I mean, yeah, it's just like, and it's, I find it more relaxing, not thinking you've got to get a plane, you've got to get there, and then you might have to quarantine. And yeah, that's not for me. No, no. Uh, Tam's been in touch to say she's desperate to get away uh, somewhere in Greece or Spain, but she's going to leave it until Christmas, hoping that it'll be a lot easier at Christmas. And I suppose, you know, that's one thing. I do feel sorry, though, Fleur, for the travel industry, you know, because, gosh, oh, how many people terrible. have lost their jobs? Yeah, I think it's terrible. I think now that that's where I think it really hits home as well, the people who are working in the travel industry, the people who have got businesses that they've set up, you know, independent travel firms. It's, it's really hard. And also for the people, I mean, like the hospitality industry, there's a lot of jobs available in hospitality, but not the people to actually go into them. And the reason for that is that we've lost a lot of the EU workers. So it's, it's had a real human impact. And that's very sad. OK, well, if you want to join the conversation here on Team Trish with Fleur and I, you can do so. 81333 is that text number starting with CWR if you are actually changing your summer plans to stay up with the rules. Also, coming up, you look good for your age. Well, not, I mean, I know you do, Fleur, but apparently we, <laughs> say, we only say it to women. We only say it to women. We never say it to men, according to one columnist. And we'll find out why after the Latina Arena here on BBC CWR. Good afternoon.